Mike here, and today are vegan levels of cholesterol too low? Yeah, maybe they help vegans out a little bit with heart disease, but does that put them at an increased risk of other diseases? Maybe messes with their hormones? Now, I promised I'd make a video on this subject a while back when I did my blood test video, but I jumped it way forward in the line because recently Bonnie Rebecca, ex-vegan, made a claim in her video when she was eating eggs that her cholesterol was too low as a vegan and her doctor said that that was dangerous and that she needed to up her cholesterol. But what I never really heard anyone talk about is that having too low cholesterol is also dangerous. My cholesterol was actually really low and I always thought, oh, that's good, like I'm not gonna get heart disease or whatever, but it was actually too low. My doctors would always comment on that whenever I got a blood test, but I would always be like, oh, the, the standards are just so high for it. Like, I don't need to worry about that. And I think that having a bit of cholesterol in my diet is actually going to be beneficial, if anything, because my cholesterol is so low. Now, as I mentioned in my blood test video, my LDL or bad cholesterol levels were at 50 milligrams per deciliter, and the average American hovers around 120. And to be specific, the Mayo Clinic pins low LDL cholesterol at 40 milligrams per deciliter or lower, and I'm kind of close down there. Does that mean that I'm gonna die? Let's investigate. Starting in the realm of heart disease, the allegedly optimal level of LDL is below 100, but clearly that is not sufficient because looking to this study that looked at LDL levels and also took ultrasounds of the insides of people's artery to measure plaque. And the results were, according to their statistics, if your LDL level is 75 or lower, then you won't have any progression of plaque in your artery. Okay, but mine's down at 50. Does that mean I need to raise my LDL by 25 points or I'm gonna die soon? Well, it looks like the statistics were a little bit limited. Perhaps the sample was limited on the last study. Looking to this next study done in 2017, it looks like 50 to 60 is actually a better place to be than even 60 to 70, even though that's an awesome place to be. But in fact, the 50 to 60 group was the only group that had no atherosclerosis at all. So it's clear from the chart that that 100 point cutoff that is allegedly optimal is not the best. I mean, the people who are just under 100 are definitely worse off than the people between 50 and 70. And that brings me, yes, back to Lauren Cordain, founder of the Paleo Diet Study, saying the optimal LDL is between 50 and 70. Although I think on his Paleo Diet, he's probably never actually gonna hit that range. Sorry, Lauren. Vegans also just happen to average right around that range of ideal LDL cholesterol. And one more supporting point behind that is babies. From this study, newborn LDL appears to range from 22 to 44, which is super low. And they can be a bit higher as this study found with an average newborn LDL of 70 with one baby up around 90, probably because their mother had high cholesterol because quote, an association between levels in mothers and their children was found. In other words, I'm a newborn baby. Just another interesting point, the higher a mother's cholesterol is, the faster the plaque builds up on their aorta, which is pretty horrible. But let's back it up a little bit. Some babies are born with an LDL level of 50. Does that mean their cholesterol levels are too low? Tammy, uh, results are in, it's not looking good. Your baby has low levels of cholesterol. You know, it's okay, I'm gonna have to prescribe you right now two Big Macs a day to get the cholesterol level of your breast milk up. Just another day in the American medical system. So where did Bonnie's doctor get this idea from? Well, from this study, quote, many epidemiologic studies published in the 1980s documented an association between low circulating cholesterol and higher overall cancer incidence and mortality. But now we know that there was something else going on and that phenomenon can be referred to as reverse causation. To illustrate this concept, one example would be the false notion that blood causes cuts. Obviously, that's wrong. Cuts cause bleeding. But if you were a very misguided alien, just not familiar with human biology, you might see the blood first and the cut later and conclude that the blood actually cut open that skin. I saw some blood, he wiped it off, and then there was a cut. Therefore, the blood caused the cut. That's really your conclusion? And you mastered space travel? No, I only came a short distance from your mother's bedroom. <laughs> Case in point, let's just move on before he makes an anal probe joke. Simply put, when you don't have the whole picture, you can mistake the result for the initial cause. Result, mistake for cause. All right, back to that study. This low cholesterol cancer death association has been attributed to reverse causation. That is undiagnosed cancer causing a reduction in cholesterol levels. So while a vegan might end up with low LDL cholesterol because they're eating a diet low in cholesterol and saturated fat, someone who has cancer, particularly undiagnosed cancers, biology is going haywire and that can result in low cholesterol. Furthermore, their chance of being diagnosed with cancer would be way higher because they actually already had cancer and obviously therefore death risk would be higher as well. 
So obviously the reverse causation here is that no, low cholesterol did not cause cancer. It was the other way around. The cancer caused the low cholesterol. The study goes on to mention that in a longer term studies, the association between that low cholesterol and cancer goes away entirely, calling it, quote, additional evidence that the association between low total cholesterol and risk of cancer is due to reverse causation and is not causal. Here's another research paper that mentions the reverse causality here and goes on to add another point that people with genetically low levels of cholesterol do not have higher levels of cancer. And we have to be thinking about the population here. Cancer is our second leading cause of death, so the sheer number of people who are gonna give that signal for low LDL because they have cancer is pretty high, it's pretty powerful. And I think the biggest nail in the coffin on this whole idea here is by simply looking at vegans who are concerned about in the first place and how from this meta-analysis, they have 15% lower risk of all cancers. So vegans have lower LDL, lower heart disease risk and lower cancer and they're the ones we're concerned about. And I wanna add that this whole low cholesterol issue really is a result of studying a sick population. We're looking at a population where virtually everybody has cholesterol that puts them at a high risk of dying of a heart attack in terms of clogged arteries. If we have healthy asymptomatic heart donors giving hearts with 50% of adults having coronary lesions, clogged heart arteries, and about 20% of teenagers did as well, then, then we have a major problem. So we have to wonder how someone in a population that's eating high cholesterol, high saturated fat Western diet end up with low cholesterol. It is sad to think that we live in such a sick population that when people actually get down to ideal levels of LDL cholesterol, people point at them and say, you must be about to die because the only people who eat the way we do that get there are about to die. And it's worth mentioning that probably most doctors fall into the sick population category. So it might be a bit of an insecurity. They don't have ideal levels of cholesterol. And so they might tend to latch on to a myth such as low levels of cholesterol are what you need to be worried about. And you need to raise your levels of cholesterol because yours are way lower than mine. Now I wanna talk about hormones to concern that too low levels of cholesterol are going to give you hormone problems. Because cholesterol is super important in the body and it actually you know, helps produce hormones and does a lot of other things. This study sums up the concern pretty well with quote, because cholesterol is needed for adrenal and gonadal steroid hormone bio synthesis, there is a theoretical concern that very low levels of LDL achieved with intensive lipid lowering therapy may lead to adverse effects. Now, as you can tell, this study is looking at it from the perspective of pharmaceuticals that lower your LDL. And man, from this study, they really, really do lower your LDL. And I do want to mention there are some pharmaceutical conflicts of interest. So we're not going to put all our weight on this, but it's worth exploring. The results, even in the people that got way, way down to less than 15 milligrams per deciliter, they showed no lowering of adrenal or gonadal balls, levels of sex hormones. And somebody like me with an LDL 50 is still gonna have over three times the LDL that those people did with normal hormone levels. So that's worth noting. But who are we talking about here? We're talking about vegans and looking to the actual hormone studies on vegans. From this one, vegan men had higher levels of total testosterone and equivalent levels of free testosterone and other hormones. So I'm not seeing the concern here in reality. All right, now let's get back to the particular case of Bonnie. From the video, I kind of got the drift that she felt like all of her beliefs when she was vegan were just wrong, and now she's just gonna completely trust her doctor. Her doctor's right, she's wrong. It was actually too low. My doctors would always comment on that whenever I got a blood test, but I would always be like, oh, the, the standards are just so high for it. Like, I don't need to worry about that. Once again, thinking that I knew more than a health professional. Now I will say it's easier to think in absolutes, but the reality is that not everything that she thought when she was vegan was right or wrong, and not every doctor is either right or wrong. As somebody who's studying public health, we absolutely need to focus on what is the best evidence, the best research, and use some logic. We can't just blindly believe things. Furthermore, she mentioned that she was trying to not damage veganism, but telling hundreds of thousands of people that your LDL might get dangerously low on a vegan diet and that hers was, eh, kind of damaging. Especially when you consider charts like this one from before, it's, you know, it could, could potentially hurt people. You know, and Bonnie's really nice, that's great. I gave her a lot of slack, but being nice can only get you so far, and I definitely feel like it's, I can't overlook some of the things she's doing now. And I'm still going to try and be as ethical and cruelty-free as possible. Someone asked, we still use cruelty-free products and all that kind of stuff. I was giving this tour of all the new furniture she bought. She features this new rug. If you go on the website, to look at the details about this rug. It's a $1,300 rug, so she's not hurting for cash. And so she could have bought a different rug if she wanted to, and she probably should have bought a different rug because this rug is made of wool. 
And I'm not saying that just to be like, oh, Bonnie's the worst, let's just rag on Bonnie. I just think it's an interesting psychological phenomenon that is sort of like exploiting animals as a switch that you can turn off or on. When you're vegan, obviously, the exploitation switch is off. But once you turn it back on, it's like you broke the dam and all of a sudden you're just buying all the animal products. And I will be very surprised if she doesn't expand the amount of animal products that she eats and so forth more in the future. And Bonnie did point at the label of the eggs and talk about how ethical they were because of the stocking density of the hens. And some things that I obviously look out for is organic free range, but also over here, they will always tell you um, the maximum amount of hens per hectare. So 600 hens per hectare is Really good. And as Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan pointed out already in his video on the topic. Yeah, clever, colorful marketing like that makes it sound like these chickens are treated great. Right? Well, what they don't tell you on these boxes on the egg cartons is that it doesn't matter if it's an organic free range farm or a factory farm, the process known as chick culling, where they kill newly hatched male chickens because they don't lay eggs. And I also want to mention that according to Bonnie, pretty much her main motivator for finally getting off the vegan diet was because she wanted to make sure she didn't end up with rheumatoid arthritis further down the line. For me, it was actually my predisposition predisposition to an autoimmune disease called rheumatoid arthritis. That was the final stepping stone for me that, that made me want to change my diet. And well, from this study, in women in particular, higher cholesterol levels are associated with higher rheumatoid arthritis risk. Just worth noticing when her goal is to actually raise her cholesterol. She might want to know that. And since I probably won't talk about Bonnie ever again, I kind of just want to clarify one point from the original video, and that was in terms of the high dose of B12 causing acne in about 10% of people from that one study, which she commented below that they were not taking high dose B12. But the reality is that pretty much anybody that's taking B12 pills is taking high dose B12 from that study I mentioned. They were able to get people out of deficiency at just 50 micrograms per day and looking to pretty much all the B12 supplements, they're, they're averaging about a thousand micrograms. So that's 20 times higher. And again, I just mentioned B12 as a potential trigger. That doesn't mean it was that. I just wanted to clear up some details, moving on. And final cholesterol point. Some people are probably like, oh, well, what about HDL? Why don't you talk about that and how low HDL affects things or doesn't? And I have an entire video on that talking about the myths around it with a ton of research. So I will link that at the end and below. Anyway, in the end, the case that Bonnie's cholesterol was too low appears to be a result of misinterpreted or outdated science and is really just good news about probably her doctor's bad habits habits and now her bad habits. Though we don't know her exact levels, there appears to be no risk at all at the level that she was probably at, which was between 50 and 70, which was ideal and putting her at basically no risk of getting atherosclerosis. But now as she includes more and more animal products in her diet, she will probably slide from that no atherosclerosis bar up into who knows which atherosclerosis bar. And again, heart disease is our leading killer. All right, that's it for today. Let me know down below what you thought. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.